everyone. I'm Davina, and this is Sharon. Uh, we're product development managers at the Open University. And we're here today to talk to you a bit about the research that we've done um, before we started developing Moodle Mobile at the OU. So this is really the why we're doing the app, but if you're interested in how we did the app, Mark and Sam both did presentations this morning, so you can take a look at their presentation slides. So just as a bit of background, um, the Open University is the largest university in the UK. Um, we have around 170,000 um, registered users or students. And we have a really active BLE, so we have over 180,000 um, registered users and around 2 million transactions every day. So it's pretty big and just as a base for that, our teaching model is very much at a distance, so students learn independently and then they use the BLE to do activities and such. So the first question we really asked before actually investing any time or money into the app is, do we need one? And the reason we ask that is because we actually already have a really good digital learning experience for our students. So this is an example of a module website or a course website that we currently use with students. This is actually the one I'm studying now. Um, and what happens is that the students will kind of come to this as their main place to go. And they'll go through week by week to see what reading materials they need to study, collaborative activities they need to do, and any online tutorials they have to um, attend. And we just work very through, way through that. And that's available both through the website and it's also fully mobile responsive as well. So we, all, we give them a range of digital, digital experiences here. So like I said, we have the website. It's mobile responsive. If you've got an internet connection, it works well across all devices. But we also provide download, um, downloads for them where they can get alternative formats. So they can get the learning materials in Word, PDFs, eBooks, things like that. Um, and on the odd occasion, we supplement these with books as well. Oh, just to mention, we do currently already have uh, the OU Anywhere app, um, the manager of which is down there. Um, so that currently manages the downloads, um, but we will be replacing that with Moodle Mobile. So before I did anything, I did some desk research just to see what people's habits were with mobile devices generally. And unsurprisingly, you can probably tell over the last 10 years, people kind of use their phones a lot. That's not surprising. However, what was interesting is when you actually look at what they're doing on their phones, use of the internet or a browser on their mobile device sort of has doubled since 2011. So people generally use the internet on their phone for about an hour every day. But with apps, it's actually gone up to about three hours a day, which is kind of a lot. So for us, if we're going to be trying to encourage students to study on the go, engage with their materials more, sort of stay connected with the university, we probably want to be investing in that space, in the app space, for the pure reason that it's easier for us to tap into behaviours they've already formed rather than trying to get them to build new habits. So again, from my desk research, oh, that's a little red bit. Um, so from the desk research, um, just a really brief summary of what people like and don't like about apps. Um, what they seem to like about apps is that they're designed for your mobile devices. They're really quick to access. Um, you don't have to worry about your internet connection. What they don't seem to like is that it takes up loads of storage on your phone and you don't always have all the information you want because um, it's often a reduced version of a website. Storage one was really interesting and in some of the user testing we did, the younger students in particular with the smaller phones were really obsessive about it. So it's something to bear in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna talk through now some of the research that we did before we invested. Um, and just to give you an idea of why we do that, we use a user-centered design process. Um, you've probably seen a version of this from one of us before. But we basically go through discover, design, develop, and release. So the upfront research was in the discover phase. And then later on, I'll give you a few insights from the user testing we did in the develop phase as well. OK. So the research we did upfront. Well, the first thing I did was go through all the feedback we'd had from students through our module websites. So we have a feedback mechanism on our module websites and all the reviews that people had left us um, from our current apps in the app stores as well. 
So this was literally thousands of reports from students telling us what they liked, what they didn't like, and what they'd like to change. So that was the, my first port of call in terms of the actual research other than desk research. We then conducted some focus groups um, to help inform some evidence-based personas, which are a key part of the user design process that we run. Um, this wasn't specifically about the app, but we had lots of really natural conversation with students who were saying, oh, it's really frustrating when I do this. Wouldn't it be, an app be great for that? So we actually collated a lot more data from that than we expected. We then worked with an external UX research company to conduct 10 in-depth user interviews with students who took us through their entire sort of student journey and they were able to articulate to us exactly where and why they would want to be using an app. So that was fantastic for us. Um, so we got some really good insight from that. And so once we'd done all of that, we sort of analysed it, looked at the kind of key things that were coming out and we started to run workshops with students our student association reps and our tutors and we got them to prioritize the, um, the requirements for us and then also start actually sketching up what they would want the app to look like. The reason we did that is because it actually was fantastic for us to get a, vis a visual representation of their expectations um, which was actually more useful than the post-it side of things. So from all that I think what we were able to drive is that the key issues that students were kind of explaining to us that we think an app might be useful in solving are that essentially they're really busy, especially for open university students. They often work full time and they study part time alongside it. And so for them, they've sometimes really struggled to get their study in. So what they wanted was a mechanism to be able to do, use little bits of time throughout the day to whether it was just to plan, do some admin, maybe do some activity on the forums, um, things like that. Just so that when they actually go and sit down and study, they can focus on that rather than having to do all the other stuff. And then they also talk about wanting an alternative way of studying other than a computer. So again, a lot of them work full time at desks. They don't want to come home and work on a laptop. So for them, having an app is almost like the experience you'd get with a book. And they often talked about wanting a streamlined version of the website. Our website is very comprehensive, so there can be a lot of information on a small screen. So the app just delivers it in a much cleaner way, um, which would be useful for them. And then something which we weren't expecting is that students often talked about feeling like they weren't on top of when things were meant to happen. So what we're hoping will happen when we have the app is that because they have consistent offline access to their study planner with all their key dates, it'll be easier for them to actually plan time around their social lives, the work life and things like that. Because at the moment they have to log on to the website to see that. Um, so that kind of disconnect wasn't working for them. Um, but ultimately what they wanted from an app or what we're hoping the app will resolve is this feeling of isolation. Again, because we're completely distanced, our students often don't see each other. So they want this consistent tether with the university, with the tutors and other students. So what do they want? So from all of that, these are the high priorities that our students were telling us that they wanted. Unsurprisingly, access to their learning stuff, which was a good sign. So they basically wanted to be able to read stuff on the go, watch videos, do quizzes, um, connect with, um, do their activities, things like that. So that was kind of expected. But a new one for us was actually because it was now being delivered through a mobile device, they wanted to be able to listen to the content. So they wanted the words to be spoken to them. So whether it's in their car or whether they're commuting or something like that, um, they wanted to be able to do that. That doesn't exist in the app at the moment, but it's something we'll probably look at in the future. Students were also very clear that they wanted notifications. Um, so they wanted to be told um, things like, you know, reminders for tutorials that were coming up, um, deadlines for assessments, things like that. But they were also very clear that they wanted complete control over that. So they really wanted to be able to turn them off um, more than anything. Um, and we had some great stories coming from some of our students as well about how they wanted quick access to their assessment grades. So at the moment they have to log on to the internet to find out what you know, the grades are when the marks have come in, but they wanted quicker access to that. Um, so that was good. Uh, some of the other stuff that they've been talking about, um, which 
the students had much more polarised views on, so we need to do more research to really understand what the requirements are. Um, but here are some of those. The key one for us really is accessibility. Um, we have a really high percentage of disabled students at VOU, um, and obviously with the new regulations and everything coming in, that's a big one for us. In the user testing, we found that the biggest um, drawbacks of the app so far were not being able to change the font size, particularly on Apple um, devices, and not being able to change font colours and things. So again, that's something we'll have to look at in the future. Uh, but generally, our expert ac accessibility has been really good for the app. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that we did focus groups for the personas. Um, well, this is Luca. He's one of the eight personas that we developed from that. Um, and basically, what we use him as the key well, primary persona for the app because he works full time in a desk job. And at the weekend, he kind of uh, works as a bus replacement driver. So we use him because what we actually expect to happen is we don't expect the kind of core study patterns of our students to change because of the app. So here you'll see that basically during the week he studies at his desk either before or after work, but at the weekends he'll actually print off all his stuff and take one with him because he doesn't have an internet connection. What we're hoping will happen when students have the app is that they have more consistent connection with the university in between. So he'll get a deadline a reminder, he'll get some forum notifications, you know, when he's got 20 minutes waiting for a bus at the weekend, you know, he won't have to go print everything off, he can just read stuff that he's downloaded. So it won't change his study necessarily, it'll just complement it, and it'll be a, a much needed addition to help fit into his busy life. So, um, from all the research we did and from the user testing that we've done on the unbranded beta version that we've been working on so far, um, we've decided to focus on three things for our first launch. So, we're just going to focus on the study planner, um, getting all our learning content working really well in the app, and downloads. Um, our user testing found that download management was something which users weren't quite comfortable with in the current app. However, the developers have been working really closely with Moodle to make uh, some changes to that. Basically, students want Netflix download management, and that's what we expect. So if it's any more complicated than that, they don't know how to do it. Um, so that's what we were finding. Um, again, much like um, the priorities I showed earlier, the things that we're going to be working on next are probably going to involve these, but a lot of that's going to be based on the user feedback that we have from more user testing. Okay. So that's the summary from me. So I'm actually going to hand over to Sharon now, who's going to talk us through um, the beta version of the app and then let you know where we're going next with it. Thanks. OK, so we've been developing the app for a little while now. And this is where we are with our current beta version. So it is using the standard Moodle app at the moment. This is being used for all our development and testing. The standard menus and app navigation are in place and all our courses are available via the course dashboard. Within each of our courses, it opens up on the study planner page. Students can pick which week they want to view. And for all the content in the planner, they've got the options to mark it as complete or download it for offline use. Our developers have been working really closely with Moodle HQ on more granular control of downloads within courses. At the top of the page, it's our course navigation that lets students transfer between the key areas such as assessment, tutorials and news. Our online con content is delivered through an in-house publishing system and our own plugin. With its own navigation, it has a range of media, audio and visual, standard content and interactives. Accessible content is key for us with figure descriptions for images and transcripts for videos being built in. Work on our standard content is complete, but we're currently working on more in complex interactions in HTML5. The assessment and tutorial pages follow the standard theme and format of our mobile responsive websites. The content is viewable within the app, as is the student's personal data. So their assignment scores and tutorial dates and times. For tutorials, Adobe Connect is going to be handled outside of the mobile app. For our first release, collaborative tools aren't going to be included. Users will be handed off from the app to the mobile web version. We started developing the Forum NG plugin, as you can see, but we quickly discovered 
that it was going to be an unfamiliar experience. So we've taken the decision to review our desktop, mobile, web and app interface in order to redesign a simpler interface that will be the same in all spaces. We've come quite far, we think. Um, we've still got quite a lot to do. So we're still working with the Moodle core app for our development and user testing. That's with our own students and staff, external researchers and participants, and our own team's field testing. We'll have our branded app in June, so basically more blue and less orange for the next round of testing. And we're aiming to soft launch to about 20 courses this September. The June milestone is actually where we start drafting our communications, guidance, formulising our support plans and building another stream into our feedback process. Physically turning on the app is quite simple. The trouble is our main teaching and learning servers host a range of websites in a range of themes. So we've implemented quite a simple admin interface that allows us to only display listed courses in the app this has been absolutely vital for our live field testing on our live servers and will be critical to our soft launch in September. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sharon. We have time for a couple of questions. Are there any questions? It's time silence. That was brilliant. Thanks. I can say be nice. <laughs> oh, is it complete? I'm asking. Right, there you go. <laughs> not, uh, not really a question. Uh, that's fantastic to see how you're taking that and running with it. Um, you mentioned one of the things that students were wanting was the uh, planning side of things. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking for a while lately that's a big hole that we have, that something would be great to work on together is mm -hmm. um, uh, there are study apps out there where you plug in, oh, I have this assignment and this assignment due in this many weeks, and it helps you plan your time leading up to that, your study oh, wow. time, <laughs> which, when you think about it, is a really obvious thing we should be doing, <laughs> uh, helping them organise that. So um, if you're interested in that or if that's something your students are asking for, maybe we can work on, yeah, on that together. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we did look at the timeline functionality and the calendar. They're not things we currently use very much, so um, it, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's the next part. So yeah, definitely, it'd be great to look at that. Thanks. Thank you. Is that another one? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. A uh, couple of things. Uh, I know it's just a very old problem for research. Uh, first, uh, what's the percentage of students uh, taken, uh, I could say, into using the mobile app as a percentage of all the students you have? And uh, like uh, Dr. Ellenberg, a mathematician, says, what is the way to provide information about the really lazy users that they didn't use it? Why and what was their reason? Okay, um, so we haven't released the app yet. So we're dealing with the early adopter release in September. Um, so um, at, up to this point, we've done the research and the user testing, but we don't have live modules on it yet. Um, the only percentages or numbers I can give you is that our current app currently has around 20,000 users, um, but we expect the uptake on this one to be quite a lot more, I imagine. Um, but at the moment, we don't know. Uh, but we'll be doing a steady rollout over between sort of September 2019 and September 2020. So maybe we'll be able to talk about that in Barcelona or next year's Moodle Moot. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.